Hey, what's going on guys? It's me, Max. I'm back today with another Dead by Daylight video, and I'm recording this very Scott Jun style, hopefully I said his name right, where I kind of just talk over gameplay. Um, and the title of the video might trigger some people, whatever, I don't really care. Um, I just think that this game is in the favor of the survivor right now, through and through. And it's not BS. Um, I'm not an insanely vetted player. I just picked up the game. A couple months ago I'm not insanely good at either the survivor or the killer I would say that I am a killer main though I do most of my hours are with the killer but every single game past the first three three or to five games with the survivor I have always escaped with survivor every single time well mm, with with an exception here and there why is that a problem and I'm gonna tell you Let's take the analogy real quick of this game, Dead by Daylight, compared to Call of Duty. In the Call of Duty universe, the game has been existing for many, many years. It uh, takes on many different shapes and forms and, you know, whatever you want to say. If you hate Call of Duty, whatever. If you love it, cool, whatever. The point is, is that in that game, year after year after year, when you load into a match, assuming you have an equal amount of teammates on each side, which is fairly obtainable, you have a 50-50 chance, you have a fair chance of completely doing good against the other team. And why is that? Simply because you all have access to the same guns, you all have access to the same everything, right from the start, right? And yes, there's a skill ceiling uh, with how the mechanics of that game work, but they're fairly limited, especially on ones where it's boots on the ground, right? So the point is that you have a fair shot at doing well in that game. There's going to be some games where you do really good, some games where, games where it goes 50-50, and some games where it goes like you just get shit on. The point is, is in the overall average, the consistency is that you are going to do decent. Or okay. Mediocre, at least. Whereas in Dead by Daylight, at this current point in the meta, you load it as killer, and especially if you are a brand new killer to the game, kind of like me, you are not going to see many wins. You're just not. The average team at this point, and this could be an exaggeration, again, I don't know 100%, but let's take it into the extreme scenario that we possibly can for the survivor team there is absolutely no reason to not do generators as soon as you spawn in the game there's no reason to look in the chests there's no reason to um you know do totems unless you clearly identify ruin immediately there's no reason to do anything other than generators that's the objective get on generators power the exit gate and leave that is it and a lot of well-communicated teams at this point do just that. And they just so happen to bring items that probably need a rework, such as uh, green green toolboxes, whatever you want to call it. Green toolboxes are better. And uh, bring brand new part, and uh, they have resilience, and they have prove thyself, and they have uh, you know whatever else to make them repair generators faster, either individually or as a team. And that's a problem. Right, I mean that's 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 huge. Um, in reality, when you're the killer, you might end one chase and get one down and get one hook, and maybe get a second hook hook on the next chase, and all of a sudden, three gins have already popped. <laughs> that's 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 not good. That's sixty percent of the objectives completed for the survivors, and you've gotten one hook, one hook state. That's horrible, and you have to assume that. It is a well-communicated team. They brought items. They maybe brought even a map offering to make it even more fair for, or in favor of them. And so on and so forth down the line. What does the killer have in conjunction to that? They have a power that may or may not have an extremely high skill ceiling. They may or may not have an add-on that is somewhat good to help their power. Most killers have add-ons that mean absolutely nothing for their power. Um, and they might have perks that might slightly slow down the game, such as Ruin or Corrupt Intervention or something along those lines. Um, Undying, 
what have you, to slightly slow down the game so that they might have to spend 30 seconds to destroy a, a totem. That's it, though. Um, because there's no reason not to use your generators. Uh, so... I actually already recorded this once, and, I, and I'm reaching in the air for where my, my thoughts went because I had a really good concise, but I had forgot to hit record, so here we are again. Um, the point of the, all this is that it's this is really oppressive system to newer players, and it's going to strangle, I think, the player base that can potentially come in. Uh, the reason Call of Duty has been successful over its years, in my opinion... Is because one, it's in a very popular gaming genre category. FPS is probably the most popular gaming genre there is. But also, two, they do it really well. They do it so that everyone has a chance. Everyone has a way to feel like they can achieve some sort of accomplishment in the game. And I think that's one of the biggest things that players can feel when they start a game. The problem is, is that with the current meta... Survivors that have been playing this game for four or five years are not going to do off-meta stuff given the new MMR system. They want to get to iridescent as fast as they possibly can. They want to maintain that iridescent as much as they can. And the MMR system does not always favor that. A lot of times when I play as killer, I'm a bronze level killer and I'm still facing iridescent survivors. And that's not correct, I don't think. That's just not how it's supposed to work. I'm supposed to face bronze survivors who may or may not be good at the game. Maybe they're also newer. That's the idea, but that doesn't happen. Um, and there's no reason for them not to run meta perks. There's no reason not to be communicated. There's no reason to give themselves handicaps. No reason, because they're losing blood points. They're losing. Um, they're not progressing their MMR. They're lowering their MMR, potentially. So on and so forth. And that's not good uh, for them. So the point is, is if I'm a new killer, I have access to the first five killers. So say I choose nurse, as you're seeing in the gameplay here. I'm not a very good nurse killer, as you can see. There's two gener... Uh, I don't know where I'm at in the video because I'm... I don't know if I timed it up perfectly. But somewhere in here, I've only gotten one hook and there's two generators left. That's horrible. That's absolutely losing uh, as the killer, right? As you can see, I don't know if this team is communicating, but they're very good survivors. Or at least they know what they're doing. They have a way. They 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 know how to play around nurse a little bit. Uh, they know that they need to stick to the objective, and they know that they should do gens. In what instance am I going to? And let's say I don't have friends to just be able to sit and uh, learn how to play nurse for a day, or I don't have twenty four hours to watch seventeen different nurse guides on YouTube. I don't have time for all that. Let's say I just I just have time to play a few games a week, just like maybe someone who would play just a few games a week of Call of Duty. How is it that you learn how to get better at that killer? Other than just saying, you know what, this is way too hard, the skill ceiling is way too high for me to even have a chance against these people who are running meta perks uh, and, and playing in a way that is conducive of favorable to them 100% of the time which is just doing the gens again with their good items say there isn't so in, in the current meta there's just not a way to combat this and I think like I said earlier in the video it's just going to strangle the newer population that seeps into this game aside from the people who are really die hard and they just want to take on the challenge and they just want to get good at the game and they just want to persevere but I think it's a real problem. I think at the very least, items need to be nerfed. And the way in which the generator progression happens might need to be reevaluated. Because eventually, if there's no new players into a game, the old players will eventually get bored and leave. Potentially, right? And then there's no player base. Which is really sad because, listen, I've been gaming my entire life, obviously. I haven't found a game that I've enjoyed in a decade. Call of Duty sort of got bland a little bit-ish. I don't know. I mean, some of the newer ones are cool. Uh, the only real series that I enjoyed was Dark Souls. And then this game came along out of nowhere. And I started playing it in 2021. And it, it's phenomenal. You know, it works really good like 60% of the time. But there's that 40% 
where it's just the deck is stacked so unbelievably against you when you're the killer, and it just seems impossible. You see, you, you're trying your best with the ability, and you really are trying. You're trying hard, but obviously you're not playing perfectly, so you are losing 100% of the time in that game. Um, and I just think that while I think that the ratio of you being able to learn and progress and you absolutely getting destroyed is a little bit too off kelter, if that makes sense. I think that the skill ceiling is a little too high for some of these killers. I think that it's it's slightly too hard and I and I can appreciate why it is that way. And since it has to be that way, I think other stuff that the survivors have access to needs to be reevaluated. It just has to. The game simply just is not fair. And you cannot sit here and say that it's not tilted in the survivor's favor at least a little bit, especially at the start of the game when a lot of, a lot of killers don't have a snowball effect with hooks yet. They don't have their power fully to their to the best potential. They don't. You know, they haven't gotten stacks on some of their perks yet. There's just so much against the killer at the beginning of the game. Because people can just go on a gen, and they get halfway through the gen, and if you don't have ruin, well, fuck. You know, two gens are going to pop by the first time you get a first hook, and then another gen pops on the second and third, and then it just goes from there. And there's just no way to make legitimate ground. And that's all I have to say, really. Um, that's all I really want to say. I don't want to drag this video on for insanely long. I don't want to repeat myself too much. I just wanted to voice my opinion. For, again, newer kid perspective. 2021 new player, killer main. I think that it just needs... Some of this stuff needs to be looked at seriously. And, and it just needs to be evaluated. Um, because this is a good game. And I would hate for it... Um, new players that come in 2022, 2023 potentially... To be strangled by this meta, this MMR system that does not work, in my opinion, very well. Um, with players who are gaining even more experience, who are going to have even more hours in the game, who are going to have even more knowledge on uh, the perks and the maps and everything else. It's just It just needs to be evaluated. So that's all I have to say. If you guys did enjoy, please surely like and subscribe. I post daily content of Dead by Daylight. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Later.